that when the railroads came in, all of a sudden, you know, this got to be right on the Homestead Act. This ended up pushing all the Indians in, well, particularly in Minnesota, but in North Dakota too, into small groups. You know, they couldn't hunt anymore. Everything was kind of restricted. And there started to be more conflicts between uh, the settlers and the Indians. Uh, part of it was to do with that the, the Indians were getting supplied by the government. And so it was through uh, the government Indian agents. Well, the Indian agent, it was, kind of, it was a poor paying job, but this was a very sought after job because the opportunities for graft were immense. Uh, a lot of times, like say, uh, cattle would be bought for the Indians, but by the time they got to the Indians, they weren't the same cattle anymore. Uh, any good animals would be sold off and they would be substituted with half-dead, sick, old animals. Well, this got to a point where the Indians couldn't tolerate it anymore. And in 1862, uh, there were some Indians that were hunting uh, kids, and they run into some settlers. Uh, again, kids, like two groups of five. And uh, words were spoken, tempers flared, and pretty soon the, the five settlers were dead. Well, the, the Indians went back to the rest of the tribe and it was decided, well, enough was enough, and they decided they would just start a war. Uh, they went on a rampage through the whole area, but particularly in southern Minnesota. And though it spread, you know, in quite a big area, and right now I'm in the guardhouse at Fort Abercrombie, the one original building left from the fort. Uh, there's been some reconstructed ones, but this is still the original building. But they uh, they ended up, there was like 800, well, four to 800 settlers got killed. But this went on for uh, quite a while because the people here kept asking for help from the army, but the problem, Fort Abercrombie, since the Civil War was still going on, the regular army was all involved in that. So the, the fort here was staffed only by volunteer militia out of Minnesota. So basically you're dealing with old men or uh, people who were, were unfit for service in the regular army. They were stationed here. And, you know, everybody who could get away got away down to here. But, they were besieged here for six weeks, over six weeks. They couldn't get out and help couldn't get in. Then finally, the, you know, Lincoln got his act together and got the regular army in here. And they started rounding up the Indians and burying the dead settlers. But, you know, when they say four to eight hundred dead settlers, uh, they really you know, uh, newspapers tend to inflate things back then, so it's really hard to say what was the truth. Now, in this ruckus, there was about, well, a hundred and some Indians killed, maybe 150, and 77 soldiers. And then the army came in and started rounding them up after they finally, because they were in trouble here, they had no wells, they were getting water out of the river, the Indians had them surrounded, they couldn't get down to the river, they finally ended up tunneling through the dirt down to the river to get water, because that was their main concern. But there was a lot of people here because everybody from the area and anybody traveling on the Oxcart Trail was stranded here. And at the time, they had no stockade around the place. There was a group of buildings, but they hadn't got around to building a stockade. The fort was actually built in 58, 1858, but it was in a different location. They made a mistake. 
and put it a little ways away on some lower ground. And as soon as the red flooded, which the red tends to do, uh, they realized they had to move the fort. So they moved it up here in 1860. But then in that two years, when, you know, because the Indians out, broke out in 62, they had to have time to put up a decent stockade or even decent blockhouses. Now there's some blockhouses up here that were put in after the, the Indian uprising was already over. But when the soldiers came in, they arrested like a thousand Indians. The smart ones took off, you know, got out, went west and south. But, you know, they caught some of them and they put them on trial. And these were just, uh, the, if you read the, the minutes from the trials, the most ridiculous trials, you know, each trial took like five minutes. There was no lawyer for the, for the Indians, there was nobody representing them. They'd march in there and they'd decide there and then, guilty or not guilty. They found 303 of them guilty and sentenced them to death. Well, Lincoln actually personally reviewed all of these trials, was a little disgusted with the whole operation, and he commuted the death sentence on a pile of them, but there was still 39 of them that were sentenced to hang. And there was quite a squabble about this, because the governor of Minnesota wanted to hang the whole pile of them, hang 303 and be done with them. And the people wanted that badly. In fact, the governor in Minnesota, who later got to be the senator, was complaining because in the elections that fall, he said that they would, you know, it was a shame they would have got a lot more votes if they'd have hung them Indians. And Lincoln said that, you know, uh, he wasn't going to start hanging people to get votes, you know, which was a sensible attitude to have. Uh, you know, they won re election anyway. But, so they had these 39 Indians, they brought them down to Mankato. The rest of the bunch, I mean, they didn't let them go. They were in prison, put in camps all over the place. Uh, most of them died of starvation or malnutrition or diseases because they, they just, their immune systems weren't set up for this and they were already weak from being starved for years. So they bring these 39 down to Mankato at the last minute, they pardoned one more, well not pardoned, but commuted the death sentence. So they were down to 38, and they hung 38 of them. Uh, I'll put a picture of that, uh, a newspaper picture again. But it was the biggest mass execution ever in this country, and still a black spot on our history. Well, this whole thing is a black mark on our history. Uh, it hasn't been equaled until uh, Hitler with the Jews, I mean, it was very similar. The programs were almost the same. They just because the theory then was wipe them out. Just what we can't move out, wipe them out. 